Mahesh, Adapt R&D, Mark Electronics. And then BEL has been giving a lot of impetus to R&D from the beginning. If you see our motto, Quality, Technology and Innovation is our motto. I think out of the 10,000 employees what we have in uh, Bharat Electronics, 50% are engineers, or out of which 50% are in R&D. So there is almost from 2,500 are in R&D. That shows how much importance we have been giving to R&D. And uh, we have three tier R&D structure in Bell. First tier is the Central Cell Laboratory, where we have almost around uh, 400 uh, scientists, we call them. So they are from the Premier Academia. They are all postgraduates from IASCs, IITs and other uh, academia. So they do the fundamental research or the application research and uh, whatever the required technology, critical technologies, they develop for the products of Bell. So we are into various verticals, starting from communication to uh, missile systems, to radars, to electronic warfare, to ship uh, solutions. So we are into, even now we have gone into the, the verticals of homeland security and also to the cyber security. So these are the verticals what we have, main verticals what we have at uh, Bharat Electronics. So also we are into the missile radar, the major radar assessments of it also. So we are, these are things. And we have a lot of collaborative work with the academia and Indian, Indian industries. We have what is called a collaborative R&D where a person or a company or an institution can empanel themselves for uh, doing uh, work with Bell, to, for doing work with Bell. So we go to them, go to their, you uh, know, uh, the company profile or the individual profile, whether they can be a, a consultant or they can be a partner for our design, we empanel them and we give them the RFPs for working work with Bell. So we also have a lot of work with academia. So most of the IASC, IITs and some of the local colleges also we have been working very closely. And we also have been working with MIT for the drone solutions. And a lot of products are being developed with the academy also. So here the IPs are being shared in a way where they can do the further research on the IPs being developed. But they cannot commercially export with the academia. But we have the total IP with us for commercial, commercial exploitation. So, this is how the, we have the arrangement with the IP, for, about the IP management. And so within coming to our own uh, R&D, so out of the last year, 10,000 plus what we 10,000 plus plus what we did. So 85% has come out from indigenous technology. When I say indigenous, almost 50% is from Inos technology and 35% is from DRDO. Only 15% from select technology partners. So this is how we you know add value from our own indigenous technologies and our inner r is our strength. So we are able to quickly migrate to any of the domains and bring out technologies in the core structure, whatever required. And we are able to build a lot of technologies. Today we are able to see a lot of new ideas coming into AI, artificial intelligence and uh, we are also working in the domain and even the cyber security, we are trying to bring in more products in the cyber security so that we are able to make inroads into that. So we already made inroads into homeland security with our own C4H solutions, what we had, we were able to bring into the online security aspects and we were able to bring in a lot more products for the online security also. We are also getting into the smart city applications, we are developing our own solutions. Today we have sensors which are uh, not plug and play, we are trying to bring up a framework where all these sensors can be you know, made as a plug and play and then we have to have an you know, interoperable solution with these sensors. So these are the things what we are going to do in the future also and we have a lot more things coming in the way. So we are also working on the very future technologies, what is required for the like one is the Li-Fi, the light fidelity where we can send through the information through light, where we modulate the light and we can send the data through Li-Fi, this is one more thing in technology we are going to work. So we have working on technology working for the drone guard systems, wherein we have the radars, we have the auto optics and we have the ESM system for us to detect the drone in from a distance of 2, two kilometers or beyond. And we are able to you know, encapsulate the drones, we can bring it down, we can totally jam the data link and also the required you know, GNSS so that it can be brought down. So we are also working on the hard kill options, like we are also working on the DW, that you know, direct energy weapons. We are working with DRDO for some other technologies and we also developed our own technologies for this. And a lot more technologies are going to come in the annual. So we have made our own small form factor server, which are airborne qualified and many more things are there. So we have, we always take the industry partners, we work with the academia, we work with the industries, we work with the consultants and also a lot of foreign OEMs. The foreign OEMs are in some selective 
technologies where he knows capacity is not there or the capability is not there. So in that we work with the foreign collaborators also. So when we work with the DRO, it is always a complementary strength. So wherever DRO has got strength, we, take the, we become the production partner with them. And wherever some gaps are there, we are going to build that gap. So our own uh, collaborator and DRO with the Enos technologies. One example is the purpose character communication, where DRO was uh, leading that uh, communication uh, requirement, where there was a gap about the multipath reception of the signals. We developed what is called the multipath, uh, no MRC we call. That capability we developed ourselves within Bell and we are able to fulfill the requirement of the Air Force. So like this, wherever the complementations are required, our CRL will work on the futuristic technologies, what is required are the core technologies we develop. And the next level is the PDIC, Product Development and Innovation Center. They take the technology from uh, CRL, also from the technology partners. They make the full products. They make the full products, qualify for the full along the application and they develop the full required family of products in that area. And next level is the, our uh, DNDs in the SPUs or the units. They front with the customer, they get the QR, they make the integration of system of systems and they make the application software along with the BSTC. Our uh, no software center is uh, CMI level 5 certified. So we have a very good uh, strong R&D uh, software also. So they are able to have the total domain knowledge about all the software order required for our uh, uh, areas what we are working on. So this kind of a three R&D structure is able to help us in bring out products very quickly and also technology what is required for the future. So this is how our R&D works and we have been working with a uh, lot of foreign OEMs also in some selective technologies where the country need to get the technologies and uh, so with this we are able to increase our, our R&D investment is around up to 10% of our sales turnover and with this uh, investment we are able to bring a lot of products and uh, we are able to make the country self-reliant. Jai Hind.